So this video is on our classwork um, properties of exponents practice. And on this, um, the first six problems here are going to be reviewing the idea that if I have x to the a times x to the b, I'm going to add the exponents together or combine them, I should say, and I'm going to get x to the a plus b. Now, um, something else to note that if I was, for example, adding two plus five, obviously I'd combine those and get a seven. If I had two added with a negative five, when one of them's positive, one of them's negative, I'm really subtracting the two and the five. And the difference between a two and a five is a three. But since this is a negative, I'm gonna have a negative three. If I was to combine a negative two plus a five, again, both of these are different signs. So I'm going to again subtract and the difference between a two and a five is a three. And this time, because my five is positive, which is bigger, it's gonna be a positive three. And then if I had a negative two added with a negative five, just like the first problem here where two and five are the same sign and I combine them. And if I'm adding two positives, I ended up with a positive. In this case, if I have a negative plus a negative, I'm going to combine the two numbers, the two and the five, and my answer is going to remain negative. And this is going to be a negative seven. Just something to keep in mind when we're doing these problems. Okay, so on number one, um, I am going to take my two and my two, which have nothing to do with the exponents that are with our m's, and I am going to multiply those together. And so that's going to be a four. And then when I'm taking my m to the second times m to the third, I am going to add those exponents together and I am going to end up getting m to the fifth. On the next one, again, I have a two that's not being raised to any power. So I'm going to have two. And then my m's, I have an m to the fourth times an m to the negative third. So I'm going to combine four and negative three. When I do four and negative three, I'm going to end up with m to the first or just 2m. I don't need to write the power one. On three, my four and two are going to multiply and that's going to give me an eight. And then my r to the negative third times my r to the second, I'm going to add those exponents together. And when I do, a negative three plus a two is a negative one. Now, I do not like that type of an answer. The eight is gonna stay. I have no problem with the eight. The r to the negative first is gonna to move to the bottom, which is an r to the first or just r. And that's gonna be my answer. Um, on the next one, number four, I have a four and a two that have nothing to do with the exponents. So when I multiply those together, I'm gonna to get an eight. And my n to the net to the fourth and my n to the negative third, when I take an n to the fourth times an n to the negative third, I'm gonna add those exponents and I get n to the first or just eight n. On number five, Five, I have a two and a four that I'm going to multiply together and I get an eight. And I have my k to the fourth times k. So when I add my k to the fourth and really a k to the one, I'm going to get k to the fifth. On six, I have a little bit more going on, but I have a two and a two in front. Those are gonna multiply and give me a four. And I'm gonna have an X to the third and an X to the negative one. I am gonna have a Y to the third and a Y to the third. So let's clean those up. 
So for my x's, when I add those exponents, 3 and a negative 1, I'm going to get a 2. When I add a negative 3 and a 3 for my y, I'm going to get y to the 0. And remember, anything to the power 0 is 1. So my final answer is just going to be 4x squared. Okay, 4x squared. Now, on the next set, um, number seven and eight are still like the ones I just was doing. I have a two and a three, and those are going to multiply and give me a six. And in this case, I have a y to the second and an x. They are not like. Usually, I like to write them in alphabetical order. So I'm going to write the x first and then a y to the second. You don't have to, but that's a lot of times how you're going to see it. Um, on the next one, I have a four. So I'm going to have a four. And then I have a V to the third and a V. And then I have a U to the second. So for my U, all I'm going to have is a U to the second. For my Vs, I'm going to take three and one and add it and get a four. Now, 9 and 10, very similar, just maybe a little more work to be done. So I have a 4 and a 3. Neither one of those are being raised to power. So when I multiply those, I'm going to get a 12. And then my a to the third and my a to the negative fourth, my b to the second and my b to the negative third. So my a, 3 and a negative four makes a negative one. I'm gonna deal with that in a second. For my Bs, two and a negative three, two and a negative three give me a negative one. So my 12 is gonna remain on top. My A to the negative one is gonna become A to the one. My B to the negative one is gonna become B to the one, or a cleaned up version of this is 12, A, B on bottom. On 10, I'm not going to have any x, um, any coefficients in front. Um, I have an x to the second and x to the third, a y to the negative fourth and a y to the second. So my x's, my 2 and 3 are going to add and give me a 5. My y's, my negative 4 and 2 are going to add and get me a negative 2, and I'm going to clean that up. My x to the 5 is going to stay on top, and my y to the negative second is going to become y to the second in our denominator. Now, looking at um, 11 through 16 here, these ones are ones where I've got something raised to a power. So the thing I want to remember for this, okay, and I'm just going to kind of jot it here on the side, is that if I have x to the a raised to the power b, I'm going to multiply power and power, and I get x to the a b. Okay. Now, on this first one, everything inside this parenthesis is being raised to the power 0. When anything's raised to the power 0, I get a 1. So that answer is just going to be 1. On the next problem, everything here is going to be raised to the negative fourth. So let me just rewrite this. So I'm going to have 2 to the negative fourth and x. Now my x is um, power to power I multiply. So 2 and negative 4 are going to multiply, and I'm going to get a negative 8. Now, I am going to have both of these on bottom, which means I'm going to have a 1 on top. You never have nothing on top. And I'll have my 2 to the 4th, and I'll have my x to the 8th. Now, 2 to the 4th, if I work it out, is a 16. So that's going to be 16x to the 8th. 1 over 16x to the 8th. Let me make my 8 a little better. And that is our answer. Um, on the next one, everything in here is going to be raised to the power of 4. So 4 is going to be raised to the 4th. And then my r, when I multiply power to power, these are going to multiply, and 0 times 4 is 0. And remember, anything to the power 0 is 1. So this whole thing right here is just a 1. So 1 times anything is 
is that thing. So my final answer is going to be four to the fourth. And if I was to do four to the fourth in my calculator, okay, four to the fourth, I end up with 256. And I don't have R because R to the zero is just a one. My next one, again, both of these are going to be raised to the power two. So I'm gonna have a four squared and my A power to power I multiply, three times two is six. And then I'm gonna clean this up. Four squared is 16. So it's 16 A to the six. On 15, my three K to the fourth is gonna be raised to the power of four. So I'm gonna have a three to the fourth and my K power to power four times four is gonna multiply and I get a 16. Um, when I clean up three to the fourth, if I put that in my calculator, I get an 81. So this is going to be 81K to the 16th. Now on this next one, when I'm doing this, this whole thing is going to be raised to the negative first power. So what's going to happen is my four is going to be raised to the negative one. My X is going to be raised to negative one. My Y is going to be raised to negative one. So all of these are going to end up in my denominator. My numerator is going to have just one. Four, X to the first, Y to the first, but I can just write it as one over four X, Y. Now, um, 17 through 20 are more of the same. So everything here is being raised to the negative one. So I'm going to have two to the negative first and my B power to power is going to be a negative four. So I'm going to have one over two B to the fourth. And that's going to be my answer. Everything here is being raised to the power two. So my X power to power, I multiply two times two is four. My Y negative one to the power two, I multiply, I get a negative two. Do not like that Y to the negative second. My X to the fourth is fine, it's gonna stay. My Y to the negative second is gonna move to the bottom. And that's my answer. Um, everything on 19 is being raised to the negative first power. So I'm gonna have two to the negative first. My X, I'm gonna have my four times negative one, which is gonna be a negative four. My Y, I'm going to have a negative three times a negative one, which is a three. So um, I'm gonna have Y to the third staying on top. My two to the first, which is just gonna be a two, is gonna be in my denominator, and my x to the negative fourth is gonna move, and it's also gonna be in my denominator. So I have y to the third over two, x to the fourth. And here, everything in the parentheses being raised to negative second, so my three is being raised to negative second, and my m is being raised to negative second. So I'm gonna have one over and my three squared m squared is gonna be on bottom. Now a three squared is just a nine. So this is gonna be one over nine m squared. Now the next grouping, I am going to be looking at um, simplifying these. And we do have a law of exponents for this. And that law is, if I have x to the a over x to the b, I am going to have x to the a minus b, where it's top minus bottom. But we don't like negative exponents. So this is how I'm gonna go about doing this, okay? So on my first one, uh, I'm gonna have a two on bottom and I'm gonna be looking at my r squared and my r cubed. For my r's, I can cancel two r's from top and bottom. 
when I cancel two R's, I'm going to have one R left over and it's going to be left over in my denominator. So I'm going to get one over, I'm going to get one over two R. That is going to be my answer. Now on this next one, we do not like this negative exponent. So I'm going to first rewrite this. So I'm going to rewrite this one on top, four stays, x to the fourth stays. And now that x to the negative first is now going to move down here and be x to the first. Now I'm going to clean this up. So I'm going to get one over four and x to the fourth times x to the first, those are going to add and I'm going to get x to the fifth. So one over four x to the fifth. Now on the next one, what I'm going to do is I notice that I have a three and a three. Those threes can make one. And then I'm going to be looking at my ends. So I have an n to the fourth and an n to the third. Okay, so again, my threes canceled out. I can cancel three ends from top and bottom. When I do, I'm going to be left with one n on top. So my answer is n. For the next one, I'm going to be looking at this m to the fourth and m to the fourth. Um, now m to the fourth over m to the fourth, those are going to cancel out, making a one. And I'm going to be left with one over two, one half. On number 25, I have an m to the negative fourth, which I am going to want to um, undo. Okay, so that I'm going to rewrite. And over here, let me just highlight, I'm going to want to do something with those negatives when I get to that problem. So um, when I rewrite this, my three is going to stay where it is. My m to the third is going to stay where it is. That m to the negative fourth is going to move to the bottom and become m to the positive fourth. Now, when I clean this up, I'm going to have a three on top. I have m to the third and m to the fourth, which is going to give me m to the seventh on the bottom. Okay, on this one, my two, my x to the fourth, my three x squared and my z to the fourth, those are all staying. Everything I highlighted in green is going to move. So my y to the negative fourth is gonna become y to the fourth on bottom. My z to the negative third is gonna become z to the third on bottom. My y to the negative third on bottom is gonna become y to the third on top. Now I'm gonna clean this up. So when I'm looking at this, my two over three, that's gonna stay. I can't simplify a two thirds. And when I am looking at my X's, I have um, two X's on top, sorry, two, four X's on top and two X's on bottom. So I can cancel two from top and bottom and I'm gonna be left with two on top. Let's look at my y's next. So looking at my y's, I have y to the third and y to the fourth. So I can cancel out um, three y's, three y's on top, three y's on bottom. And when I do that, I'm gonna be left with one y on the bottom. And then if I'm looking at my z's, I have a z to the fourth and a z to the third. Those are both on bottom. That's going to give me z to the seventh on bottom. And that's my answer. Now on the next one, I notice I have a four here and a four here. So those fours are going to cancel out, making a zero. I also see that I have an x to the zero, which is really just a one. And then I notice that I have this that I do not like because it's negative. 
So if I was to rewrite this, I'm going to keep my Z to the third on the top, my X on bottom, and that Y to the negative second is going to come to the bottom. And that's my final answer. On the next one, um, looking at this, I do not like that K to the J, sorry, to the negative third. So I'm going to do something with that. So let me just kind of rewrite this. So 2H to the third, K to the fourth, 3J, K, those are all staying. My J to the negative third becomes J to the third on bottom. Now I'm going to deal with this. So looking at my numbers, two thirds, I can't reduce that. So I'm going to have a two on top and a three on bottom. Um, H's, I only have an H to the third. So that's going to stay H to the third. If I look at my J's, um, I have a J and a J cubed. They're both on bottom. So that's going to give me a J to the fourth. And then if I'm looking at my K's, I have a K to the third over K. I am going to be able to cancel out one K from top and bottom. And that's going to leave me with three on the top. And that's my answer. Um, on 29, I don't have any negative exponents to deal with. Uh, my four over three, I cannot simplify four thirds. And then I'm going to be looking at my M's, my N's, and my P's. So my M to the fourth over M to the second, I can cancel two M's from top and bottom, and I'm going to be left with two M's on the top. My N's, the most N's I can take from top and bottom will be two, and I'm going to be left with one N on the top. My P's, I can take three P's, that's the most from top and bottom, and I'm gonna be left with one P on the bottom. That's my answer. Um, the next one, I have some negatives that I need to deal with. I also have some powers of zero, which those are really just gonna be ones. So I'm gonna have a three X to the third, and then um, my y to the zero and my z to the zero, those are just a fancy one. I don't need to write it um, because I don't need to have a, a one on bottom for no reason. My negatives, uh, my y to the negative first is going to become y to the first. My z to the negative first is going to become a z to the first on bottom. My x to the negative fourth is going to become x to the fourth on top. And when I simplify this, I'm going to have a three. And if I'm looking at my X's, my X's are both on top. And so I have three and four, which means I'm going to have a, oops, it's not going to change to Y. I'm going to have a total of seven. And then I have my Y and Z on bottom. And that's the end of this video.